in a nutshell, I'm a psychotherapist. Um, I work with different people for a variety of different issues. Um, but what I thought I might start with is the definition of psychology, because I often get asked as soon as I tell people that I'm in psychology, they're like, are you analysing me? So, <laughs> um, psychology is the scientific and study of mind age. and behaviour. Yeah. Um, only if you want me to. <laughs> um, so, psychology includes the study of conscious and un unconscious phenomena. So, um, it comes down to a lot of conversations of what you're aware about, but eventually those deeper conversations of what you're not aware about and formulating those patterns and, um, and working together to unlock that. Um, and obviously, feelings and thoughts. Campbell? Oops, sorry. <laughs> and going back to that previous question, so what if people who study psychology really do know what you're thinking? Um, that's our goal. <laughs> um, that's why I do what I do, because eventually I want to have those conversations with you. So if there is an issue, there's a change of life happening for you, um, I can put you in the right direction and guide you to get through that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, some of the specialty areas that I've worked in, and there's probably a few more that I haven't listed here, um, identity, relationship issues, trauma, anxiety, eating disorders, post-traumatic stress, depression, addiction, personality disorders, grief and loss. Um, so in a nutshell, I have, I've been studying for probably the last 10 years, if not more, um, in a variety of different areas. There's a few um, particular areas that draw my interest a bit stronger than what I've stated here, probably more so in addiction and uh, personality disorders, but um, I'm very comfortable to work around all these areas with you or if you've got a family member, friend, someone close to you that needs assistance. The problem, so some key statistics. Um, this was taken from the Australian Bureau of Statistics and it's a recent study uh, that just over two, and two out of five Australians aged 16 to 85 years have experienced a mental disorder at some time in their life. Um, that's 43.7% or 8.6 million people in Australia. That's a lot, a real lot. Um, and the reason why I'm drawing to these statistics because there's probably someone right next to you in this room that has either undergone something challenging in their life or they're going to. So having these conversations even as a friend or putting them in the right direction with somebody who's supportive um, is going to help you. Oh, go back. <laughs> one, <more time. laughs> um, one in five have had a 12 month mental disorder. 12 months, 12 months of your life. Um, I'm someone as well that if there is someone that you know who is in a more serious stage of going through something difficult, um, I've got recommendations that I can put forward to you as to get the right treatment for in in-house facility or other more um, deeper levels of treatment as well. Um, there's a bit of there's a bit of um, ch challenges if you don't know how to approach that. Um, so if there is someone that you know, put them um, my way and I can guide them through it. I can definitely help them speed up that process because if you don't know, it can be a time consuming and time is of the essence when somebody is in that seriousness of a state. Uh, oh, sorry, no. <laughs> anxiety, it comes up to be the most common group um, of disorders uh, across people. And I think that really just comes down to the hustle and bustle of today's time. There's a lot more pressures, um, inflation, pressure financially, um, I'm not sure if anyone can relate to that or yeah, feeling the pressure. Yeah, often you just ask people how they're going and I, I don't remember the time where someone said, feeling very relaxed, haven't had much going on. <laughs> um, if somebody were to tell me that these days, I'd be like, oh, okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> um, and almost two in five people age 16 to 24 years have had a 12-month mental disorder. This age bracket here of 16 to 24, it really relates to that emerging adolescence period where um, identity is the number one focus for these young teenagers. Um, and what, the, what studies have shown us is there used to be a breakup of all the different age groups, how we develop 
um, as humans and because of the delay in building families um, and the increase in lifespan for that matter as well because of um, benefits in healthcare as well, that it's likely um, in future that we're going to be working for much longer, um, which means the workforce, and I'm sure Kel Kelly will relate to this and can see it in the market, is there's going to be a lot more older people continuing to work for a much longer period of time. What this means for us as individuals from an economy's perspective is our pensions are not covered, they're not prepared yeah. for somebody who's working that length of period of time. So um, psychology comes into a lot of different aspects of just the economy as well. Uh, <laughs> um, as touched on a bit earlier, I work with pretty much everyone, adults, teenagers, families and carers as well. Um, and I can work with your support people who you've already got in place to develop uh, an appropriate plan uh, for you. My promise and my pledge is a high quality level of care that is personalised, confidential, compassionate and non-judgmental. Um, having someone to trust and feel comfortable is paramount and um, I hope that um, you can find that within me. Um, and I employ evidence-based treatment strategies, so you can count on that if you do see me. I'm not just going to pull something out of a hat. I've been studying for a very long time, so there's different techniques um, that I can um, share with you. Um, I have done kids before. It's really more of a referral basis. I would say I tend to more work with adults, teenagers and families, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The solution, well, I'm hoping I'm part of that. Um, but if not, I know a lovely group of people that if I'm not the right fit for you, um, but a little bit uh, about my approach is I offer a fresh perspective. I'm unbiased and I, I just want you to live the life with confidence and, and peace. We only live once, so you wanna make the most out of your life. Um, you wanna be happy. Um, you wanna be happy with the people that you surround yourself with. Um, yeah, and as well as seeing um, as what we've got here, seeking support is a sign of strength. Uh, I think a few weeks ago when I spoke with this group, psychology still has a little bit of a stigma attached to it. We can all go to the doctor for something that's physically evident and say, I've got this cut here, fix it, and you can see the progress of that healing. Whereas mental health, it's a little bit more harder than that. Um, and I think, again, okay, thank you. Encouraging that um, is going to be the right steps forward. And I've got the suitcases here because I've literally got invisible suitcases in my head of all the tools and strategies that can help. I offer a flexible approach to care. So I do have a, um, an office, a, a lovely safe space in Surface Paradise if your preference is to meet with me. <laughs> Um, but I also do online telehealth sessions as well, and that can be before work or after work, whatever works in with your schedule. So uh, we probably won't get through all 10 today, the misconceptions about um, seeing a therapist, but we'll start with the first few and go from there. So myth number one, speaking about your emotions and thoughts will only make them worse. Definitely not true. The more you can talk about different things, um, the more you can have understanding of what's going on and can work through that. And honestly, there's a lot of people who bottle up emotions and thoughts for a long period of time and it's toxic. It builds up in you, so you've got to get that out and it's, it's a, a release. Myth number two, therapists are experts in mental health, so they must not have their own mental health issues, relationship problems or difficulties, difficulties in life. Wrong. <laughs> I'm human as well. Um, a lot of people uh, who get into psychology, it's because they've gone through different things themselves or they've seen it uh, with people around them. Um, for me, it was a, um, uh, an observation of my own family on my mother's side having no mental health issues to my father's side of the family where it being full of mental health issues. So I felt I was very fortunate to have the perspective um, to see it firsthand um, with direct, but also the confusion and misunderstanding from people who 
who are not used to dealing with health issues as well. Myth number three, therapists always give their clients a diagnosis. No. Um, as of more recent, there's been a lot of studies done on overdiagnosis. So if it is going to be of value to diagnose someone, um, we will do that, but it's not always the most productive step forward. Um, we might jump through, um, Campbell. If you're interested to know some of the other myths, I can always share them with you. We jump right across. Okay, so going just back, yep, where to hear from now. Uh, well, we only covered three of the myths. So if there's any fears that you've got about seeing a therapist, um, one thing that I want to put forward is um, one of the myths that I did not cover is in terms of finding the right fit if you do see a therapist. So there's no hard feelings if it's not me. Um, but I do know a whole bunch of other people who may be able to, uh, able to assist. So it's finding that perfect personality um, mix as well for you. And it's always not the most um, wonderful experience of people going into their first session and meeting someone that they don't click with. Um, but don't give up hope on that because there is someone out there and there's a lot of help out there. Um, I might just stop on that with the presentation. Um, but I'll open up the room if anyone has any questions. Comments? I would just no? say, like, yeah. just to confirm, it's just you. You don't have employees or do you have a business? Or? Good question. So um, this, it's just me. Um, a lot of my work at the moment, I have been working uh, with a company called Care CFO. They take up a lot of my time at the moment. Um, and they predominantly work with aged care, NDIS, but for companies and I'm offering more of a, um, a heavy focus in employee assistance programs um, with support workers, nurses. Um, they're going through a bit of a challenging time with understaffing at the moment, so a lot of my time has been spent there more recent. Yeah. Okay, now, mm. I'd like to thank you very much. Every time we get someone from this group speaking, they are, they are so professional in their specific industry, we got them all at our fingertips. And I don't think you get a better example uh, 